Hello, Northwest. It's me, Ms. Maney. I'm sorry I cannot be there with you today, um, but I figured this is the next best thing. It's basically like I'm still there with you. So today we're going to discuss something a little bit new. Um, we're getting close to Halloween. And if you remember, if you were one of my students last year, we discussed major and minor last year around Halloween. And it's something I like to pull out every Halloween because... As you know, we've been talking about music. We've been talking about how music makes us feel or how we might describe music. And we often talk about how it makes us feel sad or maybe the music sounds sad or angry and things like that. We always associate this emotion to it. And we haven't talked this year about why. What characteristic about the music makes us think things like that? And usually it's because the music is going to be in a minor key. Minor is when it's going to be sounding a little bit sadder, a little bit darker, a little bit gloomier. So for example, if I were to play a major scale, this is my D major scale. It's gonna sound pretty, pretty ordinary. It's gonna sound like something you're used to hearing. <laughs> sounds happy, joyful, right? It doesn't make us sound scared or depressed or sad, but what if we were to change a couple things about it? I'm gonna turn it into a minor scale. So this is a D minor scale. All I did was change just a few notes and it totally changed how we feel about it, right? Changed the vibe, changed the mood. It's a little bit different. So let's talk more about minor scales, shall we? Or would you rather create with a minor scale? Let's go ahead and create. Hopefully you have your Chromebooks out. If not, perhaps after this video that will happen for you because we're gonna try to make music on our own. So you're gonna need a Chromebook and you're gonna need your headphones too so that way you're not super distracting to the people around you. And my Chromebook is open so that way you can see my screen. This is my home screen. It's just a Google search engine. So I'm gonna type in Chrome Music Lab Song Maker. And we're gonna go ahead and it takes us to this search and I'm going to click on this very top one. I know it's the right web address because it says musiclab.chromeexperiments.com. So I could click right here or I could also click right here if I wanted to. Both are going to take me to the same place. So let's go ahead and click it. And we're at the song maker. It's slowly loading, slowly loading. And we're going to use this to help create our own music. Now, typically, I would just give you free reign and let you do whatever you want and hope that it sounds good. But we're talking about minor keys and I would love it if your song sounds a little spooky, right? A little Halloween-y, maybe a little dark. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna make sure that we kind of start and end in the same place. Do you see this dark line that goes across here in the middle of my screen? If I were to play the note above that, that would kind of be what I consider the tonic, the do. That's like a good starting and ending place. Remember when I played the major scale? If I wanted this song to be in a major key, I would start and end on that red. And I'm actually gonna change this to a piano so it sounds a little bit better. So there's the red. Here's the major scale that I just played for you on violin. This is a different key. This is on starting on C instead of D but that's okay. It's going to sound pretty much the same. Let's go nice and fast. All it is, it's just making a major scale for you. And I'm making it nice and boring, but then we can hear it. So let's go ahead and listen to it. Sounds pretty average, right? Joyful, happy, nothing too exciting. But that's not what we're doing today, right? Today we're trying to compose in a minor key. Lotus, I'm gonna press the button in the top right corner that says restart, it starts me off fresh. Instead of starting on that red, which was the note right above that dark line, I'm actually gonna start 
on the purple. And again, I'm going to change it to, um, I'm going to change it to piano because it's going to sound a little bit better for you. I'm going to start and end on the purple. So here's that purple. I'm going to do the same thing. Let's just go ahead and do our little minor scale and listen to what's happening. It's the same thing, right? But it's the minor version. And I'm just going to go all the way right back up. And I'm going to just focus on that purple color, right? That's our new tonic. That's our dough. Let's listen to it. There's that spooky feeling, right? That little darkness we were looking for, a little bit more Halloween-y. Now we've got it. So when you create your music, I want you to make sure that you at least start Ah, I really do like it on piano. I would prefer you start and end on that purple. And that will help us ensure that it sounds that Halloween-y, that spooky. It's not a guarantee. You can still do things that's going to make it sound happy or major. But this will kind of help us set up for success a little bit more. Okay? So let's talk a little bit more about what we can do. So hopefully, and if... Uh, and if you didn't catch the directions at the beginning of the video, I have them written out for this up or for your teacher. So hopefully somebody can help you find where I'm at. OK, but let's just look at my screen real, real quick so you can figure out what we can do with this. All I'm doing to make these notes is I'm just clicking. I'm just clicking on the screen. I can play more than one note at a time. I want to focus on this note. Oopsies, wrong click, up and down. See, if we were to play it, it's just gonna sound like a jumbled mess, but nothing exciting. It repeats itself every single time though, okay? So as soon as it gets to the end, it goes back to the beginning to repeat itself. And my goal again is to start on the purple and end on the purple. If I wanted to erase anything, if I was just like, that's awful, I can go to restart if I want to completely start new. Or if I want to just erase some of them, then I would take my mouse and click on it again, and then it turns into an eraser. So I can just go through. Maybe I really liked where that purple was, and I said, well, that part sounded good, but everything else between was not very good. So I can just go through and erase it. Okay? Earlier, you noticed I was playing around with this sound. Because of how my speaker is right now for me to record, I didn't really like the default sound that it had at first. Um, so look, bottom left-hand corner, you have the play button. That's where you play your music. But next to it, it's going to show a xylophone. You can click it. You can change that sound to a piano. Or you can change it to stringed instruments. Or you could change it to woodwind instruments. Or you can get more of an electronic feel if that's what you're into. That is totally up to you. Play around. Maybe make your song and then change it and see how you feel. Um, it's it's kind of got some cool sounds to it. Next to it, there you see this um, almost looks like a keyboard. It says electronic. That is for some percussion down here. And one of these, this one's a little bit hard to hear because of my speaker right now. But you have two options. And you can change it, though, if you like a different sound. You can change it again if you want just traditional drums. That is up to you. You can play around with that just like you can play around with the other one. Again, I'm just clicking the buttons where I want it to be. So those circles down at the bottom, that's where you add your percussion sounds. The squares at the top, that's where you make your notes. Tempo, I'm not sure if you remember what the word tempo means. It's been a little while. Tempo is the speed of music. So down here it says tempo, then there's this slide bar with that dot in the middle that you can make uh, go to either side. And then you see a number on the right-hand side. That's going to be our beats per minute. So it's automatically, I can't get it back. It's automatically at 120, which would be 120 beats per minute. But maybe you want it to be slower. So you're just going to click it and drag it down. If Maybe you want it, you know, uh, to go twice as slow. That would, Then you would put it at 60 uh, or maybe you want it to go really fast. So it does limit you. You can't do anything you want, but you can go anywhere between 40 and 240. 
I'm going to put it back. Let's go ahead right at 100. And let's make a really quick song. Let's see. Um, maybe we'll do like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, but in a minor key and see how that sounds. So, ooh, the electronic. Let's see where we're at. This should sound familiar once we play it. All right, I started and I ended on the purple. This should sound like a spooky version of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Let's listen. And it is. And then I press the same button. I press the uh, play button to stop it. But basically, you would just press it to play or to stop it. All right, so good luck to you. I'm not going to give you any more instructions, okay? Your goal is to go to Google um, Chrome Music Lab, find the song maker, start and end on the purple, and have fun. If you like what you make, you can go to the bottom right-hand corner, look right below beneath my face. You can press save. It'll save it to you, for you. You can email it to yourself. You could email it to me if it's something you're super proud of and you want to share with me. I would love to hear it. But have fun and I can't wait to see you again very soon. Bye.